A huge welcome to our new criminal knights to sixth grade math advanced and accelerated class. This is Mr. Elmhurst. I'm going to go through the all about integers homework assignment. And we're going to start off with what is a whole number? So a whole number is just any number that is going to be without a decimal or a fraction attached to it. So this should be real quick. List the first whole numbers. So we're going to start looking at the positive side of numbers is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these are also called our natural numbers or counting numbers. So if we take a look at opposites, for example, what's the opposite of up is down. What's the opposite of left which is right. So it is on the other side. The opposite of some is on the other side. Another word could, you could say is the reverse of something or the inverse of something. So what is the opposite of having $3? So if you don't have it, the opposite of having it would be losing three dollars or not having three dollars what is the opposite of losing five yards the opposite of losing is gaining okay, so if all whole numbers can also be called positive numbers all whole numbers what do you think the opposite of the whole numbers would be called the opposite of positives would be negatives. And that's what we're going to get into with integers. Okay, what do you think those numbers are going to look like? So if you have losing $3, how would we write that in a negative? Negative 3, it's pretty straightforward. Losing 5 yards. Be negative five, and we could have negative 42, just for example. So the negative will go on the left side of the number. Three is a positive whole number, and when you put a negative to the left, then that would make it a negative three. Integers are all whole numbers and their opposites. So let's draw a diagram on what this might look like. And we're going to choose a Venn diagram. And so just take a moment to create two groups. So the largest group, we can represent that in a larger rectangle. And we're going to call all of these numbers that are going to go inside this big box are going to be called integers, which are going to be the whole numbers. And then it also will include their opposites, which would be the negatives. So let's try the drawing stylus here okay so integers would be any negative numbers and we've come up with a couple of them here we have negative three negative five and also within the integer groups we're going to put the whole numbers which we had positive three positive five and zero would also go in here, which is being non-negative. So what is going on with this diagram? The smaller group within the larger group is representing just the positive numbers, but the positive numbers are also a part of the larger group of integers. So integers could be any of these, but the whole numbers are only going to be the positive numbers. Now we're going to try to place integers on a number line, just looking at how to label numbers without fractions or decimals on a number line. So on the horizontal number line, generally you want to start at zero. It's your starting point where your whole numbers are going to start. So we got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, just for example. Now, starting when you count up to the positive side, you're going to go from left to right. 
However, once you go to the negative side, you are also going to be starting from zero and you're going to be counting up in the negatives, but going in the opposite directions, starting with negative one. Negative one, negative two, you're getting more negative going up with the numbers, but they're going to be in reverse or opposite order, negative four. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing on the vertical number line, starting at zero, pick a center or middle point here, zoom out just a little bit. So it looks like this might be somewhere in the middle. So we can identify this as zero, the split point between the positive numbers and the negative numbers on an integer number line. Okay, and then we're going to count up from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to count down from zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. We're actually counting up in the negatives, but we're counting down as far as value going away from zero. So now that we take a look at our definition of integers, it, they consist of all positive numbers and their opposites, which means the negatives. So whole numbers going to the right and uh, at zero, including the negative numbers going to the left. So let's just talk about opposites here. So if you went positive five on the number line from zero to the right, what would the opposite be? Going left five or negative five. So if you were at negative nine, what would the opposite of going left on the number line negative nine be? It would be going right. You could just put nine or positive nine. The opposite of positive three is negative three. The opposite of negative four, positive four. The opposite of positive 28 is negative 28. And just for example, a large number, the opposite of going left or negative 59 spaces would be going right or positive 59 spaces from zero. Okay, I still don't have my stylus here, so I'm not writing very clearly, but you, we should be able to see what's going on. Okay, so use the number line to record your answer. Label the opposite of negative two with an A, the le then label the opposite of four with B. Okay. Filling in the number line is a great strategy to help keep yourself organized. So zero to counting up in the positive direction to six, and zero counting to the left in the negative direction of negative five. Looks like what we have on the number line. Okay, so we have the opposite of negative two. So we find negative two, and instead of going, oh, let's undo that. Instead of going left negative two, you go in the opposite direction to positive two, and we're gonna label that A. Okay, then the opposite of positive four, so the opposite of positive four going to the right four would be going to the left four. And we're going to label that B and label the opposite of one. So we got one and then negative one would be C, point C, and the opposite of negative five with a D. So if we go all the way over here to negative five, the opposite would be going positive five. So the number line looks a little messy, but it's showing the direction starting at zero, negative five, positive five in the opposite direction. So let's talk about what absolute value is. So we're gonna think about two words and what they mean separately. Then we're gonna come up with a definition of them together. So the absolute value 
is distance. So distance is the value of a number that's measure, measuring the distance from zero. It's only how far is it? How far is it to school? How far is it to home? We don't talk about positives and negatives. So since absolute value is only talking about distance, distance can never be a negative. So absolute value, whenever you see the word or the term or the symbols, it can never be a negative number. The sign for the absolute value of a number looks like this. It looks like a vertical, two vertical parallel numbers or train tracks. It is a measurement, if you would. It is a measurement. Let me go here from one number, wherever it's at the number line, to zero. So how far are you going to measure the number? How far would it take to get back to zero? So the number you want the absolute value of would be placed between the two lines, okay? So for example, down below, what are the absolute value? Well, positive five has a distance of five from zero. Negative nine, the value or the distance from zero would just be nine. We would not put a positive or negative number on there. Three is three units from zero. Negative four is four units from zero. So once you get the hang of it, once you get the concept, absolute value is just distance from zero and is only measured in a number. So with this idea of opposites of positives and negatives, we are going to look at the last thing for today. The last thing we'll talk about is making zero. How can I turn having $1 into having $0 when we're thinking of positives and negatives? Uh, what would that look like in a diagram? Okay, so if you have a dollar in order to get zero out of it, you're going to spend a dollar. So the idea is you have a dollar, you spend a dollar, and that is going to equal zero. What about losing four yards in a football game? So if you lose four yards, how would you get that back from negative four to get back to zero? Well, you would have to gain four yards. You need positive yards. So losing four yards, the opposite of going back, you would have to move ahead four yards or gain four yards. So this concept of positives and negatives can go together to help you understand how to get back to a zero point. So the idea of gaining and losing positives and negatives together, uh, we're gonna model this out in positives and negatives. So if we had one positive, and one negative, if you go a positive yard and a negative yard, together, both of these would say, reset you back at zero. That's also too, is if you had $2 and you spent $2, you would reset back at zero. The movement going right to and then left to, you're back to zero. Or even for example, if you, owed somebody three dollars and then you paid them three dollars after that you would owe them nothing so whether it's one one pair two pairs three pairs a hundred pairs positive and negative together will always make zero together when you're pairing them up so one positive match with one negative will always give you zero together this concept in math is called a zero pair. So using the idea of zero pairs, we're gonna ask the numbers below, the integers below, when starting with a three or a seven, 
what would you have to combine these numbers with in order to get zero? Well, you would have to add three negatives to the three positives. You need to combine them, and that would give you zero. If you had positive seven, seven positives and seven negatives would put you back at zero. 23 positives, you would add or combine 23 negatives with the positives, and that would cancel it all out and take you back to zero. So I think you're getting the idea here. Two negatives and, we're going to use the word and here, two negatives and two positives would give you back to zero. Nine negatives, nine positives would give you zero. And the last one, just a bigger number, just for an example, 98 negatives and 98 positives would also give you zero. Okay, thanks for joining me. Make sure your name and your homework is complete and turn it in in class.